Hey guys, so today we are at Tokyo Station because on today's episode, I'm gonna be meeting up with my good friend Norm from the channel Tokyo Lens. And today, in a trip sponsored by the government of Fukushima, we're gonna well, we're gonna be heading up to Fukushima Prefecture to experience Japanese culture at its finest. We're gonna experience kendo, which is a traditional Japanese martial art, kind of has roots in samurai culture. And, and tomorrow, we're gonna be riding the Griff Taxi at ABC Circuit. So this video is not without our content. All right, guys, so let's go inside. Let's see if Norm's already there, and we're gonna hop onto the Shinkansen. And it's gonna take about three hours to get to Koryama Station. So I'm very excited. It's not every day you can ride a Shinkansen, the bullet train, and uh, let's get to it. All right, looks like Norm is around here somewhere. Oh, there he is, there he is. Let's, let's, let's stalk him. And this is Norm Hunter. Da -da 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 -da. Excuse me, do you know where I can find that? <laughs> scared the bloody heck out of go, man. I'm liking the Honda jacket. Yeah, yeah, Honda racing jacket. Nice. Norm, what are you most looking forward to on our trip? Uh, Obviously I, I the answer is hanging it. out, right? Oh, yeah, that's, that's it. That's it, that's it. That's Just that's being together. The only reason I'm here, really. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. 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 Hey. Alright, and so our great adventure north begins. We are riding the Tohoku Shinkansen. It travels at incredible speeds of up to 240 kilometers an hour. Alright, so we are on the Shinkansen, which is a really, really nice ride. It's basically like an airplane in here. Incredibly comfortable, and uh, this ride is only going to take about an hour and 20 minutes which is a lot shorter than if you're going to take the car, which is taken. from Tokyo would take about five to six hours to be in the traffic. So it's definitely a very convenient way to get all the way to Fukushima for not a lot of travel time. Gazing out the window, it's super interesting to see how the concrete jungle of Tokyo starts to give way to more and more nature and farmland as we travel further away from the metropolis. Alright, so we are here in Toriyama. I'm starving and we're gonna try out some traditional traditional Fukushima cuisine. Okay, are you excited? I'm, I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm very excited. Once again, this video is sponsored by Monster. <laughs> <laughs> Monster and Family Mart Coffee. Yeah. Gorgeous day out here in Koriyama. Very beautiful. Put all our stuff into this huge van. Wow. That's a great picture. <laughs> Part of the north of Japan, uh -huh. and uh, if you keep going, that's Hokkaido. So now we are now Fukushima. Compared to this Hello. picture, where's Tokyo? Uh, Tokyo, no, uh, okay. Real map. You can pass out yes. and, uh, Tokyo here and uh, Fukushima here. A truck passes by or a barrier passes by. <laughs> yeah. From Koriyama Station, we go further into the countryside towards Aizu Wakamatsu, a castle town in the interior of Fukushima known for its samurai tradition. I caught a bit of shut eye to prepare for the battles ahead. Aizu Wakamatsu is surrounded by mountains, of which the magnificent Mount Bandai is the region landmark. Farmland and nature abounds in this incredibly beautiful area of Japan. Alright guys, so we are here at our first spot. Uh, we're gonna have lunch here. <laughs> oh man, these guys came in uh, just t-shirt and shorts. You didn't know you gotta So our lunch is gonna be in this lovely room uh, on the tatami floors and we have to take our shoes off. So usually when you eat at Japanese restaurants, you take your shoes off and sit on tatami mats under low tables. Our lunch is a quite delicious traditional surf and turf style meal with some meat and fish dishes. The taste is very unique to this region and everything has a curiously sweet undertone. Even the sake, which we get poured copious amounts of, even though it's only lunch. Can I have a glass bottle and draft, that's why Asahi is super draft. Wow, this is lovely. Oops. Here I'm pouring some tonkatsu sauce on the pork, which is kind of like a traditional barbecue sauce. It's kind of sweet and savory. Pork is very juicy. 
The interesting thing about traditional Japanese dishes is you never really know what they're gonna taste like until you put them into your mouth. Yeah, it's like a dessert, dessert fish. Yeah. It, it completely loses like the fishy taste. And here comes the sake, which is poured in a glass inside of a wooden box. Kanbai means cheers. And this sake is really hard to drink. <laughs> So good. So good. Oh right, okay. Nice. So are they shelves or are they drawers? It smells like a furniture store. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it smells like those little bags of cedar chips that you put in your bath to make your bath smell like an onsen. So so yeah. What? <laughs> One of the things that you can get to like kind of spruce up your house, excuse the pun, is you can get these little bags of cedar chips that you leave in your bathroom. And when you walk into your bathroom from all the humidity and warmth, yep. you just get the smell of cedar. Mm. And it just it makes your whole bathing experience much less mm. crammed and crappy and Tokyo-esque. Finished lunch and now we're gonna do a samurai experience which is basically doing kendo. Instead of a, a live sword, you use a, a wooden bokken. I actually do this sport in every single uh, junior high school. So when I was in ALT uh, on the jet program, uh, I used to sometimes volunteer with the, the kendo club. This is Aizubuki Yashiki. It's a samurai residence which served as the quarters of the region's most important and highest ranked samurai. We are at a samurai village where a couple of ninjas are trying to sneak around and not get caught. Here we're gonna do um, Japanese archery, which is called kudo. Oh, this is that's a good look, man. <laughs> All right, yeah. It's, it's like no change. Oh yeah, you do it. Right, let's do it. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> Literally, everyone, everyone landed in the same spot. <laughs> Oh, oh, so close. You should just take them all like that and just like throw them all at the same time. At the Aizu Bukiyashiki, you can see what the home and life of a high ranking samurai was like. Here, time has frozen, and walking through the corridors and gardens, which have been beautifully restored and maintained, it feels like you've stepped into a portal right into the Edo period. So we're here at a rice mill and apparently this rice mill was operational in just this matter 400 years ago. It's really amazing to see, you know, just how ingenious the whole design of it is. I mean, it's, it's all wood and, and like metal and iron. It's just it's really fascinating. Having grown up doing martial arts, you know, I did karate, taekwondo, and Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, it's, it's really amazing to come to a place like this which is Kind of one of one of the venerable spots of you know the martial arts culture, and there's a lot of uh, you can almost feel like there's like a power to this place. Just kind of being here, it's a it's, it's a very special place, and for me, it's uh it's, it's kind of spiritually fulfilling, fulfilling in a way. It's it's definitely a refreshing break from the hustle and bustle of Tokyo. I feel like here you can kind of recharge, you can meditate. And even though we are on this kind of like guided tour, you know, it, it's a unique and wonderful opportunity to see another side of Japan that you wouldn't normally see on your on your daily life uh, or on my daily life in the corporate grind uh, back in Tokyo. So next stop, we're gonna go do some kendo. We'll do kendo at the grounds of the Suragajo Castle, which was built in 1384. So this is Suragajo Castle. Uh, this is one of like you know the most beautiful landmarks of, of this area and it's a stunningly huge white castle it's like seven stories can you imagine living there we are here finally at the top the fifth level of Surakajo and perfect timing because it's just about sunset so we couldn't have asked for a better time to be up here you just imagine being you know the lord of, of these grounds seeing all your your subjects as far as the eye can see, that's even really something to be to be the Lord here. When you think about how all of these people, all oh, that's probably like thirty thousand people, and that's like less than most, you know, up and coming YouTubers. That's kind of crazy when you think about that. Over there are the Bandai Mountains. Let's see if I can give you a better view. 
gorgeous, gorgeous view inside as well. Beautiful sunset here. But everybody always asks how Norm gets such amazingly beautiful shots. I mean, he just uses his iPhone, like right here, <laughs> perched against this cage here. So what is the secret to making great content? Waiting, <laughs> uh, being patient, and just using what you have in your pocket. Really. The best camera is literally just the one that you have, or the best out of the ones that you have. I, I've got like a bigger camera in the back, that's what, that's what <laughs> I've got the giant thing. It's just, oh, no, 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 I can get this with this. Order. Yep. All right, guys, we are now at the martial arts training grounds and we're going to do uh, kendo. After visiting the samurai village and scaling the castle, I was eager to train in the sword arts of the samurai. My favorite movie is actually The Last Samurai and soaking up this atmosphere was really special for me. Kendo literally means way of the sword and it's a very traditional martial art descended from kenjutsu or swordsmanship. It's widely taught at even the junior high school level, but for practitioners, it's not so much a sport as it is an art form and a way of life. Every movement, every position, every stance has a hidden meaning and purpose. It may seem extremely rigid, but like other disciplines in Japan, it's actually through self-control and mastery that one becomes free to express themselves fully. to do it with the correct form, it's, it's, it's really cool. <laughs> Though it had been a long time since I had last held a shinai, I could feel my passion for the martial arts starting to burn up hot again under the tutelage of these kendo masters. Growing up, I found that the self-discipline and self-control I developed through years of training in traditional martial arts helped me pull my life together and become a stronger, more confident person. Now, okay. it seemed like all those days and nights spent training in other disciplines was helping me pick up Kendo more quickly than the others, except for my rival, Norm. Norm also had many years of martial arts training under his belt. In fact, 15 years ago, we used to train together back in Canada. Now, we were here in Japan for the ultimate showdown. to show our respect. Thank you very much. After our introduction to Kendo, we were treated to a match between two of our senseis who were both high-level masters of the art. Oh wow. <laughs> 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 
far. The defeated side is also show respect to the winner. Mm -hmm. But the thank you very much that you tell me that my weak point. So that means that if, if I use these words, it's a kind of catch ball of their mind. The one communication with the mind. We made it to our hotel. Very nice. That's a nice little one hour drive. Get a little bit of quick little nap. So we're gonna freshen up and then have some dinner and rest for tomorrow. Very nice place. So we have about 15, 20 minutes before dinner. I'm going to get changed into my, uh, my yukata. Okay, no, not at all. It's really it's really slippery. It's gonna take a quick break. Chill here for a bit. I guess I have to even have my Yes, very traditional Japanese style. Uh, before dinner, all right, we're ready for dinner. So this is the uh, you know traditional traditional style uh, yukata kind of. Uh, um, kind of like a kimono, I guess, uh, wear that you get when you uh, stay at a hotel. They're really comfortable. This is a very fancy place. Hi. Oh, hey guys. Once again, we were treated to a very lovely traditional full course meal that far exceeded my expectations for a government sponsored trip. So they have set out a delicious looking meal for us. This is. Kind of, it's like nabe, so it's kind of like you're gonna uh, like make your own uh, like stew, basically. I think. Amazing! It's like a meal fit for a king. It's gonna be perfect. Yeah. This is so fancy, yeah, man. It's, awesome. it's like a, like like a very official looking, yeah. you know. Arm's got the full-on YouTuber special over here with the uh, huge Joby Gorilla Pod. <laughs> Everybody's gotta get there. We go. There we go. There we go. There. That's everyone. I think I got some people for you. Just a bite. And then the, eat another one. I mean, another part. Bite, bite. And then the make it that one. Be fresh. <laughs> Is it like a miso paste? Mm. Looks like it's miso. I think it's a kind of the soy sauce, soy sauce sake with sugar. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah? It's really good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. Psycho pie, yeah. or psycho yeah. pie, yeah. Recon pie. Yeah. Recon pie. Yeah. There we go. Okay, as well. So this comes in a very nice pink bottle. This is extremely dangerous. Very easy to drink. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, friends, the shabu shabu has sharded shabu shabuing. In, in Japan, meat tends to be like high grade meat, tends to be really soft and easy to eat because uh, rich people are lazy, so they don't like to chew their food. Morning. So I overslept a bit. Uh, I gotta get up. I think uh, breakfast finishes in like five or ten minutes. So let's see if I can still scratch up some uh, a quick breakfast and maybe hop into the, the bath real quick because we gotta get out of here by 9.30. It looks outside. Okay. Oh my God. Wow. Oh wow. It's stunningly beautiful outside. Hang on, how do we open this? Gorgeous. All right. Let's get going. Looks 
like everyone's already done except for me. Especially with this view. Wow. A traditional Japanese breakfast usually includes rice, salmon, an egg, and miso soup, and maybe some pickled vegetables. It's a great healthy way to start today. All right, breakfast done. Let's see if I can hop into uh, the bath real quick. Traditional inns called ryokan often have a hot spring bath. Here, you can soak away your troubles in 40 degrees Celsius water and recharge your mind and body before or after a long day of adventuring. Uh, it's great that phone sees these are waterproof. Literally only another couple minutes and I gotta get out. Now we're gonna head to Ebisu Circuit to experience the drift taxi, which is really just riding with somebody as they drift around the course. That's so cool. Although, we wanna actually do the drifting. Yeah, they probably won't let us, you know, insurance and all that, but it's still, you know, it's still fun. Ikimashou! Ikimashou! Hi. Okay. Hi, guys. Station. Uh, nice. <laughs> Ebisu Circuit is a huge complex with seven tracks that's one of the premier drifting based tracks in the world. So you can buy a car and you can leave it here. Yeah. <laughs> you can also buy a car for the day and then sell it at the end of the day. <laughs> so our issue right now is this huge car, this high ace. Uh, well, they don't want to drive through this little tiny hole, although apparently it does fit according to the sign that says literally this car fits. They brought another car. That is a pretty tight fit. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is like the same car. It's literally the same car. Huh. And they're saying it does fit. I can totally understand why he wouldn't want to, why the driver wouldn't want to squeeze through that tiny passage. Unit. <laughs> what the? <laughs> this is always like the. If they don't open the gate, having to come through here is the worst part. Alright, guys, so this is what we came here to do. We're gonna ride this Mark II uh, around and around uh, East Course here at Ebisu Circuit. So the drift taxi is basically an experience where you can ride along with a professional drifter as he goes around the course. And uh, I mean, it's not my first time riding in a drift car, but for these guys it will be. And so it's gonna be very exciting for them. And it is still very exciting, uh, particularly because today I'm excited to use this camera. Now this is the Insta360 ONE X. And this is a 360 camera, which happens to come with this super, super long carbon fiber uh, uh, selfie stick. And so we're gonna be able to get some really, really cool shots with this, hopefully. And yeah, very excited. To the office for a second. Good morning. Good morning. So you, you can actually come here and uh, you can you can actually go for the perfect drift lesson package and you'll, you, even without your own car, you can uh, come and they'll lend you a car and you can learn to drift the whole day. Today what we're going to do is the drift taxi to experience traditional Japanese drifting. <laughs> that's traditional. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's, that's the best wording. Traditional. Like the geisha used to do. Yes, right, right. Back in the Edo period. Back in the Edo period. Yeah. Yeah. With the one J's. Rick Shaws. Rick Shaws with the one J's. I like how this golf cart has like this this wooden like right. steering wheel <laughs> modded yes modern dog car. Uh-huh, for a fish. Gives me a really like soft 
bokehlicious zoom option into my 8 to 16 oh, yeah. super wide so that even inside this car here I just get it all. I don't have a uh, super oh, no. wide lens. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna film <laughs> Norm's camera and you will get
that was the end of the drift taxi experience it was so much fun and definitely if you've never gone drifting uh, if you've never had a chance to sit in a drift car this is the only legal way to experience it it's totally worth it to come all the way here to ABC circuit uh, because this place is great there's so much stuff to do you know you, you can hang out and, uh, and check out the zoo afterwards and just an amazing place for car culture it's definitely uh, like a, a must visit if you're into cars let's head back there and uh, recoup have some lunch and then head back to Tokyo because what a day Look at that. It's the best experience ever well guys best experience ever ever we see this in movies but today we've done it live yo Matt salute best I think oh. this is this is definitely something that even if you're like slightly into cars, if you're into like Initial D, Tokyo Drift, or, or you know any car culture, this is an experience that you have to come to Japan to experience because it's the only legal way to experience drifting, right? And it's way more welcoming than you would expect, and that's yes. the thing that's like really big. People think it's this like closed off culture yep. that there's no way that they can get into. If you can get here, you can try it. Absolutely. And it's only an hour from Tokyo, and then like a little bit to get here to the circuit. Yeah, maybe, maybe two. So plan plan for an extra hour or two. And but here people speak English, so you can come over here with uh, with you know pretty much not knowing anybody. And as Noriyoto once said, if you want to get into Japanese car culture, if you want to get into the community, you have to show up. You have to meet people. You have to just come here and make friends. And that's how I did it. That's how Norm did it. Yep. And if you're into the culture. Get over here, man. Just do it. Just do it. And we'll see you here sometime. What year are you doing drifting? 20 years old. 20 years old. Yes. How many years did you start? Uh, 8 years old. Ah. It's a good thing. First, yeah. it was a circuit. I was not able to drive before. Yes. At that time, it was a circuit. But it was a circuit. 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 海外の方に何か伝えたいことありますか？あのー、ぜひ一度ここエビスサーキットにね遊びに来てください。はい、特にエビスのドリフト祭りというイベントは、はい、すごい楽しいのでぜひ一度来てください。はい、ちなみになんであのー、なんでドリフト始まったんですか？ドリフトを始めたのは女の子にモテたいからです。ああ、そうだよね。当時なんか昔は、はい、今と違ってドリフトできたらすごいすごかったああそうなんですかでも今でもなんでまだあのデートしてるんですかでもやっぱりドリフトは今日みたいにあのドリフトをね知らない人がドリフトを知ったらすごいみんな喜んでくれるああでそれはすごいいいこと自分にとってはドリフトのことは何ですか自分にとってはドリフティングイズマイライフありがとうございます。はい、thank you so much。thank you。and then the menu you're gonna need to take it into Canon。ああ、there's two things。look this video that was made already。the workflow is insane。you just basically import the video onto your phone。and then you can look around as you're going through the video。that's completely crazy。oh、tiny planet。drift planet。super cool。Before heading back to Tokyo, it's time for one last meal. Here, I'm having an ebi fried teshuko set. Ebi fry means deep fried shrimp, and this particular set, with its copious amounts of tartar sauce, really hit the spot. Despite all the delightful meals we experienced, this quick lunch turned out to be my favorite. I guess I just have simple tastes, or maybe it's that they can make simple meals really great in Japan. I've been very impressed with the meals. Mmm, these shrimp are huge. They actually give a reasonable amount of tartar sauce. Mm. How often do you go into a restaurant and get the right amount of tartar sauce? Oh, I'm very rare. They're always like, I wish I had a little bit more. And you go to buy it, and it's like, some yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like a bowl of tartar sauce. Okay, now that we've had a filling lunch, let's head back to the Shinkansen uh, station and make our way back to Tokyo. Back to Tokyo now,、uh, back on the Shinkansen, and it's gonna take about an hour and a half to get there. So maybe tonight I'm gonna grab some burgers.
Hey guys, so welcome back. I'm back in my studio and I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you made it all the way to the end. And I just want to give a huge thank you to JNTO, the Japan National Tourism Organization, for giving me the chance to experience that trip and going to Tohoku and Fukushima, being able to experience local culture, try kendo and experience the drift taxi. It was an amazing experience and I highly recommend going to Fukushima and experiencing that area of Japan for yourself. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, let me know what you thought. And let me know what other areas of Japan that you would like me to go visit and explore. And that's it. So, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.